See how much we got left. Enough to go for about three and a half more hours. Welcome to another day of corn harvest. We do have some work to do around the grain bins this morning. We're going to transfer some more stuff, get the wet bin close to empty. They're going to come out and readjust the auger on the header for the combine and hope that that helps some of that uh, plant material from flowing through so thickly. Thickly, is that a word? I think it is. And then we're going to move five miles south and take out 100 acres down there because there's a different hybrid of corn down there that dries out really quickly. We're a little concerned that it could be so dry that it might start breaking over. So we want to go get that harvested as soon as we can. I got to go see the girls before they run off to school. It's that time of year. I don't get to see them enough, so I better go visit them while I can. Morning. Not starting off good, buddy. Now what? On a flat tire. No way. Oh, for Christ's sake. Hey, whoa, hey. You almost killed me. Good morning. Did you guys notice I got rid of the spec? You know how I did that? New camera. We are going to shut this thing off because we're almost out of wet corn. We got plenty of other things to do before we get the combine going, one of which is another flat tire, different one on this truck and a headlight that's out. Another spot for a decent view this morning. Everybody's taking corn. All kinds of work going on over here. We got Midwest Machinery adjusting this auger for us. We got Jim fixing everything that's broken. And we got the dogs keeping watch over everybody. Couldn't get air in it. God. Tried, tried, rotated it, and it just. Always something. The transfer of grain continues. The transfer of grain continues. Well, Jim goes and gets that tire fixed. I am going to finish emptying out our very last bin of soybeans for the year. That way we can transfer corn into here. This little spot right here, that's rotten stuff from the gate opener we have up here, which is on the outside and apparently started leaking a little bit of water. So I am gonna silicone that shut from the outside once I have this thing empty. Only about 100 feet to go. But I'm gonna shut it down now so that I don't get dust in the lens of my brand new camera for you guys. Morning. Oh, another day in a couple grain bins. Yeah. Oh, you coming in here yet? I'm two thirds of the way around. I haven't run the sweep yet. I just climbed in here. Oh, okay. Dad is going to head out and start running the Mendeco VT vertical tillage on that field we were doing last night. But here's what I'm doing here I'm pulling this stuff away from the wall because the power sweep doesn't grab it. It doesn't pull that away from there and we're putting corn in here so we need all the soybeans out of here so i'm going by cleaning up the outside walls and making sure i get it to the middle 
then I'll run the sweep. It's it's this whole thing. It's uh it's one of those deals. Uh oh. It's good, you think? You wanna try it right now? I'll find an empty truck then and I'll buzz out there and we'll try it out. Okay. Five to four. Go ahead. Eric's got that uh auger on that combine readjusted so he's wondering if we want to go out and try it right now should i bring an empty truck out to him we could see if it made a difference yeah you, you sure could um he's north of the buildings in the bean field so i don't know where, where if you want to come out to this field we are going to head out and make around with that x9 now that the auger's been adjusted and see if that helps everything i'm doing with the bins seems like one step at a time there's constant delays because Getting the crop off the field is number one, but right now we're down to the point where we need more room to go with this corn, so we gotta have somewhere to go with the crop. And it's all screwed up for a few different reasons. Again, number one, because COVID screwed up our marketing. We ended up carrying over a lot more corn than we really wanted to, so we're stuck with this corn. It's a poor quality corn. We need to move it just so that it keeps better. And dad, with his double knee surgery, has set everything behind. Harvest started a week earlier than we expected, which is a good thing. That's not a bad thing, but it caught us off guard. Well, it seemed like that helped. It's not perfect, but we were harvesting 6,000 bushels an hour, unloading on the go at six, what did I say? We were harvesting 6,000 bushels an hour, unloading on the go at about six and a half miles per hour. We got two trucks in a hurry, so I gotta go dump this and come back and get Jim. Seemed like really speeding up the header speed and leveling it out more. That was, that was what made the difference last night, but it seems like, I don't know, I'm driving pretty fast today, so we're gonna take it back to the yard, fuel it up, and get out of here, go do some field work, get some harvesting done. And repeat. We're gonna go harvest now, which means we need diesel in everything. Throw some diff in this thing. Thunder. Unfortunately, thunder was empty on diesel, so we gotta bring it over here to top off that. Ditch, you okay? She's fine, just taking a nap under her corn header. This thing does not have an automatic window cleaner over here and the guy driving the thing is too lazy to do it himself because he never wants to stop. But we're cooking along, dumping on the go. Five and a half miles per hour roughly, give or take. Right now, 53, 5,000, 52, 54. Uh, that's bushels. That is bushels per hour of capacity coming through the machine. And I can drive faster, but when we're dumping on the go five and a half miles per hour with a 40 foot, 40 foot header, that's fast enough for me. I, I can only keep up to so much. As I'm still getting used to this thing, there is a lot going on. So now he's gone, I sped her up right here. We're going 6.2, 5.9, she's up and down a little bit. We're pushing the power, so we're running up. We'll slow it down a little bit. 5,400, 5,500. When we get in better corn, it, it will eat it. Header seems to be working good. This has a different chopping system underneath it than the, uh, than the mower blade style, I call it, than the Stockmaster heads. It's doing a good job. With what we did with raising that auger this morning, it seems like I'm getting a few more cobs bouncing around, but at five to six miles per hour, there's enough stuff feeding in that those cobs never go anywhere. They bounce around a little bit more when I slow down. I don't know if we help the, the plant material situation at all or not, but I'm running the head pretty fast. 
and uh, I'm running it pretty level. And between those two things, I haven't had a single problem since. And this corn, maybe this is a different hybrid, so maybe it's holding together a little bit better as well. Five to four, it's pretty flat here, and the corn's decent. Let's bump it up to six and see what it does. Even like six, two, or three. See what gonna see what's gonna happen here. So now we are unloading on the go. Six miles per hour, 6.0, we're pushing, well, the corn isn't as good as I thought. There's 4,400. We're moving. We need better corn. There's 5,700, 53. We still just need better corn. It'll do it. I've seen it. Or let's back it down to five and a half again. Like that better. I do like the feature where the corn runs more to the side of the cab than on top of your head. It's just not quite as loud, so that's handy. After my first few hours in this machine last night and today, let's go through a few things here on some of the stuff that I do and do not like about this machine. Keeping in mind that the machine that I'm used to is 10 years old, so the machine I'm used to running is an older machine. There's a lot of functions, functions and features in this thing that I'm just not used to because we don't have them on our machine. Uh, they are probably on the newer S-Series machines and probably on a lot of the newer manufacturers' machines as well. So just keeping that in mind, I'm gonna go through what I do and don't like at my first initial observations here. First off, it is a much nicer cab than what we have on our other machine. I believe it's basically the same cab as what is in the newer S-Series machines. I think it's the same as the 780 was last year. Um, very comfortable. The seat is, I think, the same seat as what was in the 8RX. It's got all the movement you could ever want in the thing. It's got the massaging part of it, which I may as well turn on because I'm working hard. And I've got the cooling fan on. It's got the refrigerator underneath here if, if you like that. Um, I tend to use my cooler to keep a GoPro some crackers in there. Um, things that I don't like on the cab, this right here is bothersome. I hit my head on that. I'm a tall guy, and that's a problem for me right there, the way that dips down. I also don't like this thing. Maybe maybe the S-Series are like that, but from where I sit, it is right in my line of sight for that side of the header. I, I, I don't like the location of that. Um, what else? What else? It's got pegs. Nice. The stick here, it's a little busy. There's a lot of buttons on it. There's even buttons underneath. But once you get used to it, it's nice. It's it's It fits the hand well, it is nice. The buttons are nice, the Gen 4 monitors are awesome. I love the double monitors. Uh, it's got a double uh, wiper out here, which I haven't used, but I imagine it's nice. I haven't turned the radio on yet. Looks like the same radio that was in the 8RX. Grain level, three out of four, so I'm at 77% in the hopper right now. I like that feature gonna run out of room easily I guess that's a good thing I do like the vents in the ceiling kind of like uh, the tractors are I like those I don't like this tiny little visor that's useful if the Sun's right there but not if it's over here or over in this area or over here as silly as this sounds there are five cup holders over here there's three back here and two over here more than enough, but none of them are super convenient for getting to all the time. I wish they would put one just right here. Just let it hang right off the side here so if anything spills, it doesn't spill on the buttons. It's easy to get to. Seems like that would make sense. Maybe you couldn't get to this large area down here then? I don't know. I'm also not really sure what this area is over here. I don't know what, what you put in there. Maybe, uh, maybe a cat bring a cat with you I guess personally I just you could put them in the fridge too there are lots of little storage spaces in here you can find somewhere to put everything so that is nice tank sample does a really really good job of cleaning the grain once you get it figured out the one downfall so far which is getting a little nitpicky here but I'm running 1400 uh, rpm on the on the cleaning fan. This thing has a monster cleaning fan. You can overdo it and start pushing corn out the back. It's got a totally different cleaning fan than what the 700s, the, the S series have. 
when you crank the cleaning fan up, you get really, really clean grain. But if you go too far, you will, it will send corn out the back. One of the downfalls is the cleaning fan lets some air come forward and it comes out through the head like this. You can help that by turning it down, but then your tank sample gets a little dirtier. It's a give and take, like with anything else, but 1400 so far is what I've found to be the sweet spot on our corn at the moment. Um, if I get down to 1300, I get a little dirty back here. Um, I haven't tried going higher than 1400 because I don't want to make that situation any worse. I guess the fridge is nice. I'm not actually used to any of my beverages being cold after 10 a.m. It's not all bad. That's cool. It comes on automatically when I start dumping. I tend that a lot of the times I just clear it out. That's what I find because I can just look out that window. I don't know, a lot of guys like it though. Um, it's handy. Uh, the stick is a little herky-jerky. I wonder if there isn't like a setting in the computer that I'm missing. It's nice, like I said, it fits the hand nice, but I struggle to be smooth sometimes when I'm in and out of corners. I don't know, it's probably a setting that I'm missing. I'm guessing. It unloads quickly. I believe five and a half or maybe more bushels per second, it unloads very quickly. And it has a clean out so that when you hit the button, it automatically stops the cross augers in the tank and allows the big auger to clean out before it shuts off. You can double tap if you need to shut everything off in a hurry. So you can still stop everything right away if you need to. I find that to be a handy feature. Took me some getting used to. Um, I overfilled the first truck. The head is a different head as well. It's got the rolly deals on the end like the header that I borrowed last year from Capello. Uh, it doesn't make any difference in the standing corn. I don't, I don't see that it does anything here, but they're there if you get into some down corn. They certainly aren't gonna hurt anything. Uh, the other thing is, this is not like the Stockmaster heads where it's got the slinging blades underneath, like the lawnmower blades. This has got the chopping rollers underneath. So it's a different style of chopper. Similar to, I believe, uh, Gearinghoff makes something similar. So we had a Gearinghoff header. We bought a new one about 15 years ago. Really liked it, it did a good job. A couple small things with it. Number one, it had a ton of grease search that we had to grease every single day. Uh, but that's 15 years ago. They probably have come a long way since then. We like that header, uh, but we did have the grease search to deal with. If you got off on the rows, it would leave the stocks kind of stringy. We didn't like that. And when you get into point rows where some of the rows would crisscross, we'd plug up a lot. This header does not have grease search like that, but it does have the other two issues. Um, I have plugged up in point rows with this head multiple times. I don't even have to reverse it. I just stop it and it clears itself out. I start up again, I'm good to go. Nonetheless, it does it. And if I get off on the rows at all, it leaves stringier stocks. Both of those things are mild to moderate annoyances for me. Um, I'm, I'm not sold on the chopping system yet, but I know Deer was going for less moving parts, uh, a little more, you know, less parts and less expense to the farmer and uh, and horsepower save. Sorry, I'm turning there. I'm trying to keep the thought process going. Get my auto steer going again here. Um, I, I'm blanking out. Anyway, I believe the idea is that it's just a simpler system underneath there. Less moving parts, less to go wrong. But I'm not sold on it yet. We're gonna have to see how it does with our tillage. If you're not interested in a chopping header or you run different tillage than we do, it may be a completely different conversation. And the folding. Folding on this header is fast and it seems pretty flawless. You do it all on the monitor, you hold the button on the touch screen and it folds right up and it goes quick. There's no issues there. There's no problem with the folding header. It's, it's handy. The one big thing yet to be proven. I have seen bushels come through this machine over 7,000 bushels per hour and I've seen it be clean out the back. But consistently, I don't yet have the horsepower to do it, which surprises me because this thing goes over 700 horsepower. Um, and I don't know if, if maybe the corn I'm in right now is making it struggle a little bit or what. I'm still, I'm still pushing that 5,500 or up to 6,000, but at, at some point I run out of engine horsepower. So I'm not able to sit here and consistently do 7,000 
we don't have the logistics to keep up to that anyway. I mean, we just don't have the grain cart or the trucks or the truckers or the grain dryer. Our operation, our logistics can't keep up to 7,000 bushels per hour anyway. But I'm trying to make this thing do it and I'm falling short on engine horsepower. I have done it, not on camera yet. I've seen it and it cleaned and it did well. But I can't do it today. But I am sitting really consistently at 5,000 to 5,500. And that's on these these long rows. You know, obviously you gotta turn on the end, you gotta do headlands. You're not gonna end up pushing that out at the end of the day. But the capacity's there. Engine horsepower is where I'm a little bit short at this point. Again, I got a couple more days in this thing. Maybe I'll find it. Um, I'm gonna talk to the, the people from Deer and see if I can tweak some things, see if there is more in it, or maybe just in corn with the amount of plant material that we're bringing in, maybe that's what it's got, which is still really impressive. I'm running through this spot at five and a half miles per hour over, that's probably about my average, 52 or 300 bushels an hour. I'm gonna jump out and we're gonna take a look at this thing in the back, see what kind of job it did there. Five to four, I'm gonna jump out here on the end and kind of walk back here, just see what kind of job it's doing. I gotta hit the restroom and stretch anyway. It's got a really nice ladder. I like the ladder. Track system, same as the 780 had last year. It's a good machine so far. So this is right down the middle, which is always gonna be the worst spot. There's one. There's one. I knocked it away, but it's in there. Pretty clean. Again, same as soybeans, you're never going to get it perfect. There's one there. There's one. When we did the calculations the other day, running at about the same as what we're running now, we were pushing about one quarter of 1% out the back in the middle row, which is gonna be as bad as it is anywhere. So it was doing a really good job and it was clean in the tank. Actually, this is probably about as clean as I've seen it. And the men's room. Oh, that's ladies. There we go. That joke never gets old. I just can't believe how dry this stuff is. This is so crunchy, so brittle, compared to what we've had for the last few years here. Unbelievable. We got dad running cart with his bad knee. It works out for him to be able to run that thing. Back to work. It's also nice with the dry corn this year. It doesn't peak up on the roof nearly as bad. Roof? Roof? You tell me. Hey dude. Hey. How was school? Good. Good. Look at that view right there. That's pretty cool. I'm just not used to unloading corn like this. It blows so easily. Man. Look at that. Are you sure it's not Mars? That's crazy. Oh, well, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Just got fun. There he goes. We're switching grain cart drivers. Grandpa's knee's getting a little tired. Onyx is gonna take over. We're sending the first string back into the game. Five to six, you can go fill that truck that's on the ends, and then when I get up there, when the second truck's here, I'll have enough to finish them off. So, can we the Peter Bill? You finished filling the one that you got half full last time. There's another decent day. We're gonna call it right now. We're gonna fill these last two trucks and we're gonna be out of here. That's it, I'm tired. Thank you guys. Remember once again, we're raising money for bin rescue equipment, entrapment equipment, training for these local fire departments that can use it and 
first responders. Check out the links below if you know somebody that needs it or if you want to donate, there's a couple links below. Keep it between the rows. Good night.